Hi, today I want to do a, hopefully quick, they always end up being longer, but a short update on the parasites and the symptoms that I've been having. So uh, I've been diagnosed with a parasite called horsehair nematomorpha. It's um, not supposed to be a human parasite, and it's mostly uh, hard insect shelled insects. And um, it usually gets its host to commit suicide. So that's a little bit about the parasite. So um, check out my other videos for the history. Um, there's quite a few of them, but The Secret is Gratitude is my channel, and you can just type in um, Parasite, and up will come all the posts about that. So um, hopefully you can see my eyes are super yellow, and I know that has to do probably with the medications that I've tried, but also um, this size had them the longest, and that was one of the very first symptoms that I knew I had the parasite because I was seeing things zipping around. And when I went to the uh, lightning bolts and um, in the shower, I would see see them. And uh, when I'd look at the sky, I could see them quickly moving. And then I woke up one night with a lightning bolt. So I went to the eye doctor, and he said the size is much worse than this one. It has a lot of floaties in it. And um, anyway, you can watch my other video about that, but. It, they've gotten more yellow, hopefully you can see, and they are super, especially this one, painful. There's a lot of pressure. It seems like when I um, eat a lot of um, foods that they don't like, curry, garlic, pepper, crushed pepper, red pepper, anything spicy like that, then the, they seem to go into the eye. I don't think the medications or the food or whatever it is gets into the eye. So it seems to drive more of them into my eye. And maybe that's why they're more yellow because I've been eating a lot of garlic and curry and things like that. And especially this left eye, it hurts and there's a lot of pressure. It feels like my eyes are going to pop. So that could be a symptom of this that if you know somebody that has just, and they don't have to be yellow. I think that's part of the medication, but just eye pressure and seeing these shooting stars and lightning bolts and um, it hurts. It feels like they're going to pop, especially this left one. Um, so that's another symptom I hadn't described in any of the other videos. Um, I did talk about in one of the other videos that, that my mom and my sibling, sister and my dad and other some family members have this symptom and I, I started doing it years ago. It was kind of like a, uh, sorry, uh, a hiccup kind of a thing. Um, after you'd eat something they didn't like, and now, sorry, I've got laryngitis, so it sounds bad, but I'm going to try and make this sound. It sounds like a pterodactyl. I don't know how any other way to describe it, but I get so much, um, when they're burrowing in and out of the digestive tract, when I've eaten something that they don't like, and I think it creates a vacuum because they're the air trapped. So it sounds like, uh, 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 uh. I can do it. Sorry. <coughs> but it, it it's an intake of air, but it's so dramatic that it makes this pterodactyl sound. I don't know how else to describe it. Before it was just kind of like a hiccup <laughs> kind of a thing. And now it's uh, kind of, it's really weird, but <coughs> I never had that before in my life. But as the parasites have gotten worse, that has gotten much worse and so I'll just be sitting there doing anything and all of a sudden I'll just have this weird intake of air and this weird pterodactyl sound. I don't even know how else to describe it. So that's a symptom. If you know anybody that just does that, they just kind of take in a, a sigh of air or it, a dramatic sigh of air and it makes a weird sound, that is one of the newer symptoms that I've had. Um, so weird. Okay. Um, I don't know what that says. Mouth. Oh, my mouth, especially when I'm laying there at night or in the morning, um, since I've gotten a more heavy load of parasites, I get these little, I don't know how else to describe it. These are all weird symptoms. I'm, I'm 50 years old and I've never had these symptoms before, so I can't, I don't know how to describe them because they've ne never happened before. So they're all new to me. Um, it feels like a pop rock, like if I had one little pop rock and I had it kind of in between my lips, um, it kind of a pop kind of thing. So I think what's happening is when the parasites are burrowing in my mouth, it'll kind of escape air or air will escape into the burrow hole or whatever. And so I'll feel like these little 
kind of a pops in my lips now and I hadn't, haven't had that. That's a new symptom. So probably over the last two months, I've started having these little kind of pop feelings in at night and in the morning, you know, not when you're eating or during the day, but when you're at rest, they start to burrow out maybe to get the moisture in my mouth. I don't know. Anyway, so that's a new symptom, but I know it's the parasites kind of feel them. Um, also I have, um, when the parasites will creep out and like have a no nose hair in the inside of the nose, I had a, a, a sister uh, I'm sure has the parasites and she's been having a lot of these all of her life, but I didn't realize that these symptoms were her symptoms until I got the parasite really bad. And, and now I know that that's what she's been experiencing all growing up when we were, she was a kid, she would always do this. She would always itch her nose like that. And I was, it was an allergy. She's never had like runny eyes or nose, you know, dripping nose or anything. It was just always every, she'd just do this. And <laughs> I find myself doing that now because the, the worms start creeping out and then it, it tickles your nose and kind of irritates it. And then you just kind of uh, rub it. And, and I, I kind of went, Oh, that's probably why she did it. Um, so anyway, that's a symptom, just kind of rubbing your nose, it's kind of itches, but you just like, you can't get in there and do anything with them. It's just, you can kind of feel them creeping around. So that's a symptom. Um, I've currently had in the last month or so, I, I think I might've talked about it a little bit on the other videos about my legs being super tingly. And I'm pretty sure I talked about that on one of the other videos, but the more I have, the more worse it's getting. I wake up in the mornings, my legs are swollen. I can feel numbness. They kind of tingle as I walk. It takes me an hour or so to, to work out. The parasites may be burrowing and going into hibernation for the day. Um, and then the swelling. Um, and it's, so that's just continually getting worse. Now, the same sibling that I was talking about doing this has such bad swelling problems in her legs and the numbness and the tingling. She's actually moving to, to, she said the only relief she gets is when she's at sea level. And I've had people write me that say that when they're in the ocean, that their legs will stop swelling and the symptoms will kind of die down a little bit. I don't know if it's the sodium water that makes them leave. Cause I don't think regular water, I don't think they, they leave in the bleached filtered water that we have. I think the salt water makes them kind of draw out. So anyway, um, that's another symptom is the swelling of the legs, the numbness, the tingling, um, it's just getting worse. So I wanted to talk about that. Also, um, I talk early on about every once in a while, I'd feel like, um, I'd wake up at night and it felt like somebody had taken a hot poker at the back of my knee. And that was when the bigger parasites are burrowing out. And I talk about how when I put some ointment and some diatomaceous earth and it was hanging out of my arm in the morning about this far and it had dried up, it had chopped up the worm. And so part of it had just dried up and broken off and, um, or not broken off. It was still hanging out of my arm when I woke up in the morning. So I, I knew that they burrow out, um, to lay their eggs at night. They're kind of like a, a big earthworm. They'll kind of burrow out of the skin, not necessarily all the way, lay their eggs and then go back in. So that causes the lesions and the, the sores and the rashes and the, the eggs will hatch at about 21 to 28 days. And then you'll get another rash as they all burrow back in. So um, that process used to be just with, I'd fill them with just a bigger one, like every so often on the soft parts of the body. So the back of the knee, under arm, underarm, like soft part here. But lately they are burrowing out all over at different sizes and I can feel them poking. And it's, it's always kind of more like, okay, so here it was first here and then the back of the knee. Now I have it all the time on my left leg, which is where most of the swelling and the uh, tingling is mostly on my left side. Same with the eye. It's like they're on the left side more. Um, but I will feel them like when I'm writing my journal or my blog at night, I can feel them burrowing out of the skin, poking it. And now it feels not just like a big hot poker. It's pricks all the time. Um, as the more I have, they're like coming out more to do their thing. I guess they're fighting for territory. I don't know what they're doing but I'm feeling a lot more of the poking out of the skin um, and different sizes of poking, like anywhere from a teeny little pinprick to safety pin poke to a hot poker bigger when, depending on what one's coming out and when. Usually the 
the bigger they are, the bigger the pain or whatever is, is usually when I'm asleep. Like I've said in another video, I think they give you a sedative. They just release a sedative somehow. Um, my sleep habits have gotten a lot worse because they're more active. And so I wake up all the time with the, the mouth bubbles or my nose feeling them out of my nose or my ears, or my eyes creeping on my eye area. Um, genital area poking out. It's bad. The sleeping is really disrupted. And that's probably part of the reason with the eyes and the health problems as well, because I'm tired. The thyroid, it's swollen. You can see I have to really struggle to swallow. Um, my voice has gotten a lot more raspy. I think there's just more of them in there affecting that area. Um, my pee smells so bad. The bladder has my uh, I, I keep getting infections because they burrow in and out of the bladder and they keep causing um, urinary tract infections. Um, and so I've not had this problem my whole life. This is just recently that this has um, become an issue. And so, um, but then I take antibiotics to kill them off and then I get yeast infections and it's just a vicious cycle. And I'd be on antibiotics all the time because they keep burrowing in and out of my bladder. So I just told my doctor, I just didn't want to deal with taking antibiotics 24 seven um, cause that wreaks havoc on itself. And so the urine has been really strong smelling and my kidneys are a little bit more affected now. And my bladder has started to, I start having, um, I can feel the same bubbles that I get in my mouth, a pop rock feeling. I, I'm getting that now, depending on when they're burrowing, um, a little bit will escape from my bladder. So I've never had that problem before. I've always had a really strong bladder and it, I think it's just, there's so many burrowing in and out and they don't, <laughs> they're a water parasite. So they go where there's moisture. So, um, the eyes, the bladder, those are water areas. And so they tend to burrow. And when my family member had a surgery in October, they scoped her bladder and there was a bunch of pinpoint red dots, like scabs where the, I believe the burp, the parasites have been burrowing in and out of her bladder. So, and the pee, her pee smell very strongly too. So I, I think that's another symptom. Um, people who are having, and I know I have an aunt that had all the symptoms um, and she had urinary problems for years. So I just want to let you know that it, it has gotten worse. There is a little bit of leakage and, and um, problems when they're active, when the parasites are active. Um, mm -hmm, I can't read this one note. Oh, okay. So, oh, one bad. Um, I have noticed also my respirations are worse and um, my burning is bad still. I'll sit down for 20 minutes, my lungs will burn as they have parasites creep from the heart into the lungs. It's called Loeffler's symptom. I don't maybe pronouncing that wrong, but um, it happens in hookworm and threadworm and I'm still having those symptoms. It hasn't gone away. It's still pretty bad. Um, I can't re recline. I, I have to be either sitting up or laying down or I can't catch my breath. And as I try and um, exercise, I have this emphysemic. When I laugh, I have this emphysemic kind of a sound. My voice has gotten lower. It's raspy. Um, so it's just that whole, because they burrow up into the back of the throat and that's caused the choking and the thyroid issues. Um, but I have noticed that I have, I read an article about the cat parasite, the crazy lady parasite, where the cat, the person will isolate themselves and hoard and, and have a ton of cats and um, doesn't really interact with a lot of people. And I have noticed that looking back over the last five years of my life, now I have had a lot going on. I was taking care of my mother. She died. My daughter rolled a car. And the other ones had babies and their college missions. I'm very busy, but I have noticed that I am doing less with friends. I, I, and family. I have kind of isolated myself. And I think that that is part of the symptom of these parasites. They get, I think they get the parasite, the, the host isolated from like, if it's a bee from the hive. Um, and so I think they isolate the host and looking, I've mentioned this on another video where I, 
my state and surrounding states have a really high suicide rate and a uh, high anxiety, depression, depression rate. And so I believe that that is part of the symptom because I have discovered that there is some kind of changes, chemical changes in that cat lady uh, brain. And so I do think that this parasite, if you get it bad enough, I think it does isolate you. And I think you do find yourself isolating yourself and then having anxiety, which would keep you from going to be with people and then um, depression and then suicide because my mother would get anxiety attacks. Now my mother traveled the world several times by herself, never had a problem. She spoke in front of thousands of people her most of her adult life. Um, she was a educational speaker, a uh, motivational speaker, and she never had any problems with that. Towards the end of her life, she did start getting anxiety attacks every once in a while. And also, um, she started hoarding. That was not something necessarily that she did early on. Um, and then uh, she did have cats at the end. Um, and she also isolated herself. She didn't like to go out and do very many things. And so I do think that that is a symptom of the parasite. And so there's just that, I, I, I just kind of think they're somehow linked because there's so many people in our area, especially young people that have anxiety disorders and depression and suicide. And we have a huge um, teen suicide rate in our area. And I really think that this parasite, that's what it does. It isolates you. And then it, it starts changing your thinking like, oh, they don't want to deal with me. I don't want to deal with it. You know? So I do think that that is one of the symptoms. And so I just wanted to share that because I do think that that is something they're going to be able to discover because I know they have already found those chemical changes in a cat lady. Anyway, they've, they've found that. So I just think that they're going to put two and two together and figure out that this cat parasite, blah, blah, blah. And that's what it does. So, um, my eyes have also gotten worse, um, visually. I just, with, with the more pressure that they've gotten, it's more like a glaucoma kind of a thing. Um, my acuity, um, and distance and visual has been worse, but the problem is I go in and then a week later it changes. And so I don't want to get glasses because every week my vision's different. Sometimes I can see clearly really well for a month and then other times it, it's horrible for a month. So I, I can't get glasses or Lasix or anything because it's changing all the time with the load of parasites. And if I take something that kills them off, maybe eat something or drives them out of my eye. I don't know. So that's a little crazy. Um, check out my video about the slime becoming um, it, like a Petri dish. Those videos are pretty cool. So just type in slime and parasites and up will come this video. So I have one where I make the slime, one where I, I show the burrow holes in the slime after, and then I made one that I didn't touch and there was no burrow holes. So that's a pretty interesting kind of way to determine if you have the parasites, you can make the slime and then hold it and play with it and then see if any burrows develop. So check out that video. I also made a video about using a citrus, um, making a, a citrus drink and um, that somebody had written me a couple of years ago and I just wanted to quickly go uh, it didn't affect the parasites it just came kind of give me like stomach ulcers because the acid in the citrus but it worked great in the bath I put some in the bathtub and it was fabulous um, and I blog about this so you can check out my blog about that but I hadn't um, done a video update on that so it worked great in the tub I actually poured some of it in the tub and it was very cleansing and it seemed to get that film I don't, people call it biofilm, but I don't know, just kind of a waxy feeling on the skin that you can kind of scrape off from where the parasites leave this film. I think it's to keep the moisture in. So it's like a wax covering. So it keeps the moisture in your skin. Um, so anyway, that citrus stuff in the shot in the tub was awesome. It was great. I think I'm just going to make some, put them in the freezer and cubes. And then when I want to take a bath, I'll just pull a couple out and throw them in. Um, I also tried a bath last night with baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, apple cider vinegar, um, tea tree oil, and a box of, let's see, I said baking soda. One other thing. Um, shoot. 
uh, anyway, it, it didn't work as well as the citrus. Um, so check out my blog and type in citrus and parasites. And that recipe worked fabulous in the, in the shower, in the bath. If you want to take a bath where you feel clean afterwards, try that. So I wanted to give you an update on that. Um, okay. The last thing I wanted to talk about. Oh, um, impulse issues. Um, well, I was doing some CEs for my nursing. Um, I'm a nurse. And so I have to do concurrent education units and I just bought a packet and I just did whatever was in there. And it happened to be on Parkinson's disease. Now they're finding that there is some kind of a Parkin. They don't know really what causes Parkinson's. And when I started reading the symptoms, I was kind of freaking out because Parkinson's symptoms are really similar to this parasite, all the symptoms. And I went, okay, now my former spouse's father was from a, a small island and, um, and from that island, they have discovered that there is a Parkinsonian type illness that masks, it seems like it's Parkinson's, but it's not the exact same but they eat a lot of fish and it's a, a small island. And so I'm thinking that maybe um, Parkinson's is kind of linked to this parasite or to a parasite. So I'm going to read off the symptoms of this study that I did, this class that I did on Parkinson's, and you can see that all the symptoms are the same. So bad sleep problems. They have problems with REM sleep. They have um, impulse issues, which pulling away from people or whatever. Um, oh, if I could read my own writing, uh, constipation, dizziness. So I told you about vertigo. I blogged about my vertigo or told a story about that daytime sleepiness because they're not sleeping at night. They sleep during the day when the parasites are less active. Um, thyroid issues, body temperature issues twice in the last month of two weeks. I have been so cold during the day. Um, I've never done this the whole time I've lived in this place almost what, over 20 years. I had on a thick 100% cotton sweats, sweats, got under two down comforters, sheet and a bed covering and, and a heating pad and I could not get warm. My thyroid is so messed up. And I, this is during the middle of the day. I am so cold and so tired. I can't get anything done and I just crawl it and I'm, my thyroid is so low. So anyway, I thought that was really interesting. Body temperature issues, thyroid issues, um, sleeping issues, um, sleep apnea, which I've talked about. Almost everybody in my family didn't have sleep apnea when they were younger, but have it now, except my youngest, which I think I already had the parasite. And my other daughter had the parasite, uh, by this time and she had sleep apnea at birth. So I think I had it and gave it to her in the womb. Um, dementia, Alzheimer's, um, which I've talked about. My mom went kind of at the end and the crazy lady syn syndrome and, um, every person on my street, every house, they're all in the care center with mind issues because I think the parasite uh, has a secondary parasite on it that changes that chemical process. So every single person on this whole street, except me, is in a nursing home with mind issues. So dementia, Alzheimer's, bladder issues, decreased smell, which I think the parasite's burrowing in and out, depression, apathy, swallowing issues, um, shopping, hoarding, those impulse issues, um, they find that they either hoarding or a compulsive shoppers. And so, uh, that, let's see, caffeine. So all of those things are Parkinsonian and tremors, muscle issues, which I have had, depending on what I eat. Um, so all the issues that, they, that Parkinson, Parkinson people have that are diagnosed with it, I have with this parasite. So I really think they might find a link between that. So, um, then, um, the other thing I wanted to talk about is they have found that people with Parkinson's, um, who smoke and drink caffeine have 
less tremors, less symptoms. And I've been saying all along, I drink Coke because I feel better when I drink Coke. I don't smoke, but I did tell you about that dream that I had about marijuana. I had three dreams about using marijuana and I, and I researched it because of these dreams. And they, there was a doctor who did a study in Africa where the people in the tribes who smoked marijuana had less parasites than those who didn't. So interesting. If you smoke, and also this is a lung parasite, so smoking may kill them off in the lungs as well. So Parkinson's disease, if you have Parkinson's disease and you drink caffeine or you smoke, you have less symptoms than if you don't. And I thought, okay, that is exactly what happens with the parasite. So interesting. I really think they're going to find a link between Parkinson's and this parasite. So that's the update. I'm sorry it's so long, but I thought it was worth taking the time to give you all that information. Um, if you know anybody with the symptoms or you're having symptoms, I thought it was worth me sharing all that. Check out my blog. I'll try to update all the symptoms on my blog as well. Um, check out my YouTube channel for the past issues of all of how many symptoms. I've, I've probably got 10 videos on there describing the symptoms as they're occurring and getting worse. And I want to say at the end here, I know everybody thinks I'm crazy because I talk about prayer and God and inspiration and dreams, but this wouldn't have been discovered without dreams. I know it sounds crazy. I'm totally for that. <laughs> I agree. I'm crazy. You can call me crazy. It's okay. Um, but I really feel like um, the other day I was kind of going, okay, God, how much longer do I need to have this? Actually, I wasn't even talking. That wasn't that I was talking to one of my daughters. That's what it was. And I was having this discussion with her and I just said, ah, these symptoms, I'm just letting you know, these new symptoms that I'm feeling of like pulling away from people and overwhelmed with just being out and dealing with people. I just want to be home and deal with all the stuff that I have to get done and get them off my list. And, um, so I was just explaining those symptoms to her and into my, and I'm thinking to myself, how much longer, you know, you know, just a little prayer as I'm talking to her. And the thought came to me that, um, I wouldn't find a cure until I had experienced all the symptoms that, um, everybody would have had so that I can share with people. This is the symptoms and I can understand the symptoms that they're having or explaining to me. Because if I had stopped with the first three or four symptoms, I wouldn't have been able to link all of these illnesses that I think are linked to this parasite together. And other people who, like, I think most people that have more gallons probably actually have this parasite. So I wouldn't have been able to link those two if I had to figure it out a cure right at the beginning. So I think um, God is just kind of helping me get through this and put this information out there because I really didn't want to put this information out there, but I feel like he's wanted me to put this information out there so that I can help other people as well as my own family and friends. So I feel like that I had that kind of like, like insight at that moment while I was talking to her and I said, wow, I just had this weird thought, you know, that I, that I needed to go through all of this so that I could understand and explain it. Uh, to other people. Yes, that is a symptom. Yes, that happens during this. Yes, those are the end stages. Yes, you can get pneumonia. You can have lung issues. Yes, you can have all of those weird things. So anyway, that was just a thought. Like I said, think I'm crazy. It's okay. But I wanted to share that. So hopefully we'll find a cure soon. I just really would love to be done with this stupid parasite and move on in my life um, and worry about other things <laughs> than this. So thanks for watching. Go to my blog. If you have any questions, type in parasites, horsehair pneumotomorph at the bottom of the homepage, and up will come all the posts and the symptoms and the diagnosis and the tests and the lung damage test. All that will come up and or watch my videos that I describe as it goes along and the worse they get. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a blessed day.